What do you get when you take all the fun and gameplay of the awesome Donkey Kong Country games, add in the same silicon graphic technology and enemies and squeeze them onto an 8-bit cartridge, you get the Donkey Kong Land series, which in my opinion are some of the best and most addictive Game Boy games of all time. Rare was having massive success with their smash hit Kong series on the Super Nintendo and wanted to expand the franchise by trying to create games with a similar vibe for the Game Boy, which in the mid to late 90s was starting to fade away. It was felt by many that everything that could be done to try and push the Game Boy as far as possible had been done, until developers Rare started to try and use the same high tech graphics and pre-rendered backgrounds on the monochrome system and created the Donkey Kong Land series which showcased some of the best graphics and gameplay ever seen on the black and white handheld. Whilst the first game in the series was quite far removed from the first country game, the second and third were pushed to try and look and feel as much as their SNES counterparts as possible. With the third country game being one of the best looking ever for the Super Nintendo, which again was being superseded by the emerging Nintendo 64, Rare decided to have one last hurrah and finish off the Game Boy series in style by creating a final land game which again borrows some elements from the SNES but takes things in a slightly different direction. Whilst Donkey Kong Country 3 had amazing platforming action, it fused this together with some cool RPG elements which had the Kongs having to go back and forth, trading with the Brothers Bear and other characters to access secrets and to advance further in the game. Donkey Kong Land 3 stars the heroes of that game Dixie and Kiddy, who fresh from rescuing Donkey and Diddy from Baron K. Rawlinstein aka K. Rawl, once again must travel the Northern Kremisphere and put a stop to the evil King of Kremlins in a race to find the Lost World. This game is a lot more linear than Donkey Kong Country 3 in that the Kongs must visit each world, complete each level and rinse them all for bonus coins and DK coins which are once again hidden on each level. There are no items that must be traded to progress, instead there's a lone bear in each world who has a shop and Dixie and Kitty have the chance to win a watch piece by playing a game of cards with the objective being to match all pairs within a certain amount of time. All six must be won in order to be able to access the Hidden Lost World and unfortunately the Kongs must collect bear coins to pay for the services to either play cards again, reveal hints about secrets one level at a time or teleport to another world provided they have made some progress. So Donkey Kong Land 3 is another collectathon game and at times does feel like an extra set of Donkey Kong Country 3 levels only for the Game Boy which is no bad thing. So grab yourself a nice cup of tea, a truckload of bananas, settle in and let's retrospectively explore Donkey Kong Land 3. The inhabitants of DK Island are buzzing with excitement thanks to a contest that has been announced to find the legendary lost world in the Northern Kremisphere. It has remained hidden for centuries and as of yet no one has been able to find its location. Everybody including Donkey and Diddy Kong have set off to try and find it. This is except Dixie Kong who has been left holding the baby, looking after toddler Kitty, meaning that she is unable to enter the contest herself. She felt really frustrated that no one had even considered or entertained the thought that she should enter the contest and felt that after working hard to rescue Donkey and Diddy in the third country game, as well as teaming with Diddy to defeat K. Rool in the second country and land games, that she is every bit as good as they are and deserves to be a part of this contest. Whilst walking with Kitty in the jungle, Dixie decides that she will enter the contest anyway and takes Kitty with her. So Dixie and toddler Kitty head off to the jungle and so begins Donkey Kong Land 3. Donkey Kong Land 3, like the previous Land games, is a 2D platform game in which the player assumes control of Dixie and Kitty Kong as they travel across six all new areas of the Northern Chromosphere. You can select between the two Kongs at any time, during a level provided you have found a DK barrel. Just like in previous games, both Dixie and Kitty have slightly different attributes and manoeuvres which must be utilised to get through each level effectively, or thus avoiding or defeating the wave of Kremlin baddies awaiting our heroes on each stage. DKC3 allowed you to team up with both Kongs and use them to throw each other to reach bonuses or to defeat enemies. As this is a Game Boy, there are no double team moves, but you will have to select between our heroes to get through some of the game's trickier hazards. Dixie Kong is the main character and can move extremely fast when she runs, her main method of attack is a ponytail which she can use to whip enemies off the screen and she can jump on certain enemies heads to wipe them out. When Dixie jumps and provided the jump button is pressed again, she can hover meaning that she can reach certain parts of the stage that Kitty cannot. 
She can also use this ability to bypass some dangerous sections of a level and makes navigating the many levels a lot of fun. She can also swim as well as pick up and throw barrels to take out some enemies. As she is only small, she is unable to take on some of the larger baddies but controls extremely well and anyone who has played Donkey Kong Land 2, Donkey Kong Country 2 or 3 will feel right at home here. Kitty Kong is the second playable character and plays just like he did in DKC3. He may be lumbering, but he has some serious strength for a little toddler. He can roll into certain enemies, jump on their heads, and can jump slightly higher if he rolls and then jumps. Like Dixie, he can swim, and he can also pick up barrels and throw them at enemies. Players always have two hit points when they have found their partner in the DK barrel. If either Dixie or Kitty take a hit, then that character is lost and the player must carry on solo until they reach another DK barrel or lose a life. A life can be lost when both characters are taking damage. Lives are once again represented in this game at the bottom of the screen as hearts. By collecting 100 bananas or an extra life balloon, the total increases. Lose all lives and it's game over and the Kongs must try try again from a previously saved game. Once again, Rareware have ported some animal buddies across to the Game Boy to help the chimps in their quest. Unlike the last game which had 5 animal buddies to control at various points, Donkey Kong Land 3 only has 4. These animal buddies can be used on any level where you see a barrel with an animal icon on. Simply jump into it and you will be transformed into whoever's symbol is on the barrel. Once you have been transformed into an animal, the same rules apply in that you can only be hit twice before losing your life. If you can find another DK or animal barrel, then this will restore a hit point if you lost one. Squawks the parrot returns and controls the same as he did in previous games. He can fly high in any direction and is able to throw an endless supply of nuts at the enemies, clearing a path to progress further and is essential for finding bonuses that Dixie and Kitty cannot reach. Everyone's favourite Spider Squitter rejoins the Donkey Kong Land series and once again uses his webs against any enemies that get in his way and he can even create web platforms which help get to previously inaccessible areas of a level and also to reach those hard to get to bonus rooms. He is quite nifty, can't swim and can be extremely vulnerable, still he is a force to be reckoned with and one of my favourite animal bodies ever. What would the Donkey Kong Land game be without On Guard the Swordfish? This pointy nosed fish resides in the many aquatic water levels that the Kongs have to traverse. He can take out baddies with the greatest of ease and can swim quite fast, however some enemies must be taken out accurately as going gung ho on them may result in him losing a hit point or a life. This is his fifth appearance in a DK game and he is essentially a veteran of the series and once again is ready to dial out some damage. Finally, last but not least is Ellie the Elephant who makes her Game Boy debut. Unlike Donkey Kong Country 3, Ellie is not afraid of mice here and has an endless supply of water, meaning you can attack to your heart's content. I think the reason Rare went down this route with Ellie was because of hardware limitations and extra animations of Ellie running from mice or filling up a trunk may have proved to be quite difficult to replicate on the Game Boy screen. Still, she can jump on enemies and look so cute as she gallops across the levels. Unfortunately, Rare didn't include Parry the Pigeon, who was instrumental in Donkey Kong Country 3 for finding bonuses that were high up, but still a very good selection to help the fight against the Kremlin Horde. As I mentioned earlier, Donkey Kong Land 3's levels are littered with bananas to collect, extra lives and feature many hidden bonus rooms to find. In each of these rooms, a mini challenge has to be overcome in which the Kongs or Animal Buddy must try and locate the hidden bonus coin. The challenges are either find the coin, defeat the enemies or collect the stars, with each bonus room having you contend with baddies whilst you try and beat the challenge in the time limit. So why are bonus coins so important? Well, on each world there's a shop containing a bear, not unlike the last game. You must have a certain amount of bonus coins just to have the chance to play cards and match the various characters and items. Should you win this card game then you earn a DK coin and a watch piece which when combined are essential for when you reach the last world. Oddly enough you don't pay the bear in bonus coins, they really are just an indicator of how good a player you are and you have to have a certain amount in order to play the game first time for free. If you fail this card game then you must pay the bear again in bear coins to pay again. Their bear coins, just like in Donkey Kong Country 3, are scattered on every level. They are the currency that the Kongs will use to pay for hints also, as the whereabouts of bonus rooms and also these bears will teleport you to other worlds for a fee. So it's all very confusing. As the Kongs reach each new world the required amount of bonus coins needed to play increases so again they're just an indicator of how good a player you are. 
Unfortunately, I should mention that Rare only brought back one Kong family member to help Dixie and Kitty and that is Wrinkly Kong. Wrinkly Kong is on the map screen and has a save cave in every world and it is here that Dixie and Kitty can save their current progress for free this time round. Now, the level structure in Donkey Kong Land 3 are once again based off the third country game. They also use the same level templates and aesthetics. However, these are brand new challenging levels and they really push the Game Boy a lot harder to try, try, try and recreate the look of the 16-bit game. Although this is clearly an 8-bit game, developers Rare have really upped the look and feel of the game with pretty much every enemy you fought on the SNES present and just as badass as ever. What can I say about the graphics? They're just some of the finest sprites I've ever seen on a Game Boy screen. Although the 8-bit system can't fully replicate the full graphical extravaganza of a Donkey Kong Country game, to me that does not matter because each level, although stripped down, slightly looks amazing and gives it immense charm. Although this can come at a cost to some levels despite being extremely detailed and advanced for a handheld, meaning that on some levels Dixie and Kitty can be quite hard to spot and can blend into the background somewhat, and also some of the Kremlin nasties you encounter can do the same. Honestly, I couldn't see them most of the time until it was too late. This happened numerous times on the snow levels and on the waterfall levels. I understand that Rare changed many of the level palettes to create some differentiation between each other so that some levels are lighter while some are darker, but I just don't understand why this is and why they couldn't have just kept the same colour palettes, which is slightly easier on the eyes. It's only a small gripe and doesn't make the game wholly unplayable, just slightly difficult at times. The two cons controls, however, are brilliant with each of them having their individual signals moves and this third land game does feel as if the Kongs move a little quicker and it's easy to see how much work has gone into the many levels that must be beaten. The underwater levels again are just beautiful, large and sparse and rich in detail and are my favourite things about the game. I also do feel that the bonus rooms are much easier to find in this game and I didn't have any problems tracking them all down. This was despite some being totally invisible on some levels. But I will say that this game is perfect for younger players as the difficulty spike is just right with some bonuses hiding in plain sight. The in-game camera is much improved now, meaning that the game won't just simply kill you off as you are climbing up through a level. I've had occasions when I was high up in the waterfalls and slipped off, falling back down for the level. However, despite free falling, the game didn't just treat it like a death and kill me off, as there was a platform there to break my fall. So it's a lot more logical and fairer this time, meaning that at times I didn't mind dying because if I fell and there wasn't a platform to break my fall, then I died by my own hand and that was fine with me. At times, Donkey Kong Land 3 feels like an expansion pack of brand new levels from DKC3 and it's incredible how large each level can be, with each one swapping environments pretty quickly. One level you're fighting on the docks, whilst the next you're thrust into a beautiful underwater level full of dangerous aquatic baddies, who despite being in 8-bit still pack a hell of a punch. So it does borrow some elements but mixes them up well so you're never quite sure what's coming next. As well as trying to hunt down all the hidden bonus rooms in the game, there's also a hidden DK coin on each level, and this time, apart from the underwater levels, they are guarded by a lone Kremlin who has a helmet and a shield. Funnily enough, his name is Coin with a K. The Kongs need to find a barrel and throw it over him where it needs to roll into him, as you cannot hit him head on. Take him out and the DK coin is automatically added to your total. All 42 coins are required in order to face K. Rule for the last time, so if you want to see everything then it's imperative to rinse every level. Thankfully, unlike Donkey Kong Country 3, coin isn't that challenging and is very easy to beat even on the later stages. Now on to the bosses. At the end of each world, Dix and Kitty must face one of six bosses that appeared in Donkey Kong Country 3. Rare have given them some new attack patterns and they look incredible on an 8-bit handheld. Although some look a little similar and are less detailed, you have to look very closely to see that a lot of effort has gone into trying to faithfully recreate them as best as they could using the limited hardware. Unfortunately, Belcher didn't make the cut and maybe Rareware didn't feel as if he was a strong enough character to bring back. Still, there is a strong cast of bosses ready to try and stop the Kongs. We have Barbos who waits for the monkeys in the first world and once again fires projectiles. Dixie and Kitty cannot fight this guy without the help of On Guard and so the fish must use his pointy nose to prod the projectiles into the prickly boss's face. It can be extremely awkward as you must be quite exact when trying this manoeuvre as if you're a millisecond off then you lose a hit point or a life. 
Bleak the Snowman waits on World 2 and fires a succession of snowballs from his top hat at varying speeds and altitudes. The only way to beat him is to wait for a break in the pattern. At this point a lone barrel will appear on top of the hut. Grab it and quickly throw it at him. I did find Bleak quite intimidating at first but he's nowhere near as hard as he is in the third country game which I was very thankful for. A very cool boss indeed, pun definitely intended. Eric the poisonous spider blocks your path on World 3 and is quite challenging. He darts up and down across the screen firing little projectiles full of venom that will do some serious damage, so you must jump out of their way if you can. Not to mention that when the menacing arachnid dives on you this can really cause major frustration. The key to beating him is waiting until he's thrown out all that venom and timing it just right so that when he dives down you can bounce off his head. This can be tricky because the first time I faced him I didn't know where he was going to dive down and I lost a few lives because of it. Basically you just need to learn his patterns and once you do this he becomes a cinch to take down. Halting you in your tracks on World 4 is Chaos. Yes, that's right, K. Rule has once again sent his creation to try and wipe out the Kongs once and for all. To be honest, the only difficult thing about this boss is that he moves back and forth menacingly and will at times produce metal blades in which the objective is to stand on them and then jump off his metal bonds. However, this is made more difficult with dual boxing gloves being produced from either side of him knocking you off, so you kind of must time it carefully. After taking several hits, he kind of lingers on screen and then disappears, leaving you to celebrate your victory. Again, it's really cool that Rare ported them over to the Game Boy, but they don't pose any significant challenge whatsoever, with Eric being the hardest in my opinion, and K. Rule going down quite easily, and he's about as threatening as a gaggle of baby geese, which I will get to later on. So you may die a couple of times but honestly they don't push you as much as perhaps they could have done. Another thing I have to mention and I hate to be overly critical but I would have liked to have seen some different brothers bears in each world. I mean it's literally the same one on every single world and his name is Bear. I mean given that Rare introduced the brothers bear in the Donkey Kong Country 3 series and showed so much effort in their presentation and character it's a shame that they couldn't put a few in this game. I am guessing that one of the reasons could have been due to cartridge limitations, so having one bear I guess does kind of make sense, but why not just make it Barter or Brash or any of them? This bear allows you to play the card game, will give you hints as to the whereabouts of bonus coins in exchange for bear coins, and will even teleport you across worlds, so at least there's something different here. Honestly, I know it feels like I'm bashing this game unfairly, I do think it's one of Rare's best ever, but as awesome as the whole game is, the storyline is that Dixie and Kiddy are entering a contest to find the Fable Lost World. However, it's only mentioned in the manual and not really in the game itself. And when you do find it, don't get me wrong, these are some awesome levels but they don't feel as difficult as they could be and are just tacked on. And then when you finally get through everything, the Lost World is barely mentioned anywhere. So I often wonder whether Rare were kind of rushing when they made this game, as they could have just repackaged the storyline from Donkey Kong Country 3 and that would have been just fine with me. It's hard to say these things about such an epic game, but I will say that Donkey Kong Land 2's Lost World levels are slightly easier, but even levels in the other worlds such as Creme Cauldron are much in my opinion harder in comparison to the third Land game's bunch of hidden levels. Please don't let my gripes with this game put you off playing because the play experience is just so worth it and is a solid platforming game. Ok this next part will contain spoilers so if you don't want to know what happens please skip ahead to the final thoughts section, I'll give you some time to do this and the timestamp. Ok, after platforming through Tin Can Valley, K. Rool shows up and this time he has shed his pirate gimmick and is now Baron K. Rulenstein, just like in the SNES. I'll be honest, I was never a fan of this scientist gimmick as the evil pirate motif suited his character much better. Regardless, this boss battle is ridiculously easy and all you need to do is watch out for his electricity patterns, avoiding them, grabbing a barrel and then bashing his bonds. After defeating him and provided you have collected all bonus coins up to this point, you'll get the 65th coin.
Then we see a credit screen with a roll call of enemies. Now this is fine, but again I just feel it's a little bit rushed compared to Donkey Kong Land 2's roll call. It's almost like, again, Rareware were in a hurry and they couldn't think of anything to put. I mean the enemies are really, really impressive and I think it's just like a technical demo for Rare to say, hey, this is what we managed to put in the game. And this is impressive, but it just, again, feels a little bit fast. Once this is over, you get a message from K. Rule, who is running to the Lost World, saying that you will never catch him. Oh, please, does he not know who he's dealing with? So, this is the Lost World that you've been searching for, and as in previous games, it features a selection of tougher enemies to deal with and more bonus coins to collect. Now, there is another bear in this world, and you will once again have to play cards, but this bear insists that to play this game, you need to hand over every bonus coin, which was a nice change. Once this is done and you've rinsed every level in this mystical land, then it's time for a final battle with K. Rule. This time the fight takes place on the cliff with the Kongs trying to stay on whilst avoiding K. Rule, who now chucks bombs like the Kachukas and uses his electricity gun. This battle can seem very confusing, but again, it's pretty easy once you break it down. He doesn't take too many hits, and as long as once again you learn his pattern and try not to fall off the edge of the cliff, which can be quite easy to do, you should be fine. After beating him, for some reason he'll go on the attack, so you have to kind of stay out of his way until he is settled down. Once he finally does go down, he accepts defeat and hands you the final watch piece and then invites you to take part in a time trial where you need to beat a specific number of levels that you've already done in a certain time. Now this was a cool idea and a nice twist for the series. Surely after doing all this I'll finally get my reward or at least some special ending or mention from the other Kongs after winning the contest. Well, not exactly. I went through the whole game, I did the time trial, I found everything there is to find, and all I got was the trophy, and that's it. The Lost World is never really mentioned, and it was never really made to feel important in this game, and that's a real shame, as it's the whole point of why the game's happening, and it's kind of part of the storyline. So I was left feeling a little bit bewildered and a little disappointed, as again I think the story was hastily put together. In conclusion, Donkey Kong Land 3, however, is a fantastic 8-bit platform game that you simply have to play. It was Rare's best and most detailed offering to date in the series and packs tons of fun with some awesomely constructed levels and enemies. But though I do take issues with the ending not really making much sense, this is still well worthy of your attention. I really enjoyed playing through this game again and it made me smile at just how good everything looks, sounds and plays. So there you go, that concludes my look at all three games in the Donkey Kong Land series. I just want to say it's been absolutely wonderful revisiting these games and hopefully giving them the props that they undoubtedly deserve. I hope that I've also encouraged you to check them out if you haven't done so already. As standalone games, they are platform perfection. If you have played the Donkey Kong Country series on the Super Nintendo and somehow bypassed the Game Boy games thinking they may be inferior or just not worth playing, then you may be surprised, as the Donkey Kong Land series offers up brand new levels and gimmicks, new challenges, and also tries to do something different with the series. Thank you so much for watching, if you have enjoyed my videos then please comment, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified every time I upload new content. Thank you so much for joining me in this look at one of the best series of all time and I'll see you next time for another Dodge This Review.